In a world where podcasts are the least effective way to get an audience about video games, two heroes boldly and bravely defy every odd and educate you on the art of the video game trailer. And we use educate lightly. On this episode, we overhype everything with shiny cinematic lies. Welcome to Save Every Universe. My name is Alec Garcia. I am a boy on a journey to disperse my mother's ashes and learn the truth about my father. Nice. I haven't done that one yet. I don't. I don't think I have. Yeah, you did. That was Wario, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you did. It was that, that one. really good. It, it wasn't well known, but it yeah. was on Game Boy Color, and they really dug into his backstory in a, yeah. in a way that they hadn't before. It was great. I think it was WarioWare 1.5. Yeah, is that it? it was. Yeah, like Kingdom Hearts, how they did like the 1.78 Part Three Dash Seven Pre Three. Section it was like, Four. There was a Wario six. installment like that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense way to way to choose a uh, no name an indie character <laughs> yeah my name's robbie i've been granted powers by the spider god and i gunned down the twisted son of a bitch who killed my uncle now i've got to stop the creep who's behind everything wrong in this city but have i crossed a line somewhere along the way so that seems obvious but there's like some variation where it's a specific thing right yeah that's okay. right okay cool so uh today we're talking about video game trailers there's, yes there's been quite a bit of uh fiasco like the battlefield 5 fiasco and we're just on the tail end basically of all the season of uh, E3 and PAX West and Gamescom and uh, the conversation of trailers and them being misleading or them being accurate or them being great. Having numbers that are too small. It's an exactly. issue. I hear that's a common thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. Especially, well, size yeah. is, it matters more than mm-hmm. some people say. Yeah, so... But not in some things. Like, I mean, like for me, size doesn't matter, but... That's really... Uh, Cool of you. <clears throat> Moving on. So, really, we decided to do an episode about this because we were having this conversation anyway. This is going to be a more structured... Structureless. <laughs> no, structured conversation oh, that we were for, already talking yeah, about. Yeah, because, yeah. well, there was the E3 stuff, and we've talked about that, but, like, with things like Battlefield Five mm-hmm. and things being hurt by numbers and sales, and right. there's just been a lot of talk of trailers, and there's been some really kick-ass trailers that have come out. There really have. And there's been some real shitters. And we're seeing now, I don't know if this has always been true, it's probably always been true to some extent, but it's really affecting the market based on how these trailers are coming out. So, And we talked a little bit, and I think it was in our gaming news episode, about how people are just, um, the expectations now of what should be in a trailer are a little bit different because everyone's been burned by the really shiny, polished thing, and it gets you excited about what this game could be or what the story might be, and then when the game comes out, it might not be the the same thing. Yeah, I think video game trailers are kind of a funny place too because like with services like YouTube, they're becoming more mainstream, not just random randomly on TV spots, which it's still weird to me to see a video game commercial mm-hmm. on a television show. It is a little weird. Yeah. It's been going on forever. Yeah. I remember seeing one for Final Fantasy VII. In a movie theater. That was like the, like, yeah. like, holy crap, what is happening? But even now, like, I'll be out at dinner or whatever, and I'll see all of a sudden, like, I saw the Spider-Man ad recently. I was like, it still is a little bit uh-huh. jarring to see that thing that is such a, for so long, was a kind of a private nerd thing. A pri- right. A private nerd enthusiasm to just see it on the screen of a bar full of people. Right. Yeah. Um, the new spider-man b greater trailer was i think it played at the uh like the the nfl football Uh on sunday holy crap is that a good trailer yeah it's a really good trailer and that's that's interesting that one is interesting in particular i'd like to talk about that a little bit deeper but um let's let's start here it seems to me you can't compare like a cinematic trailer for a movie directly to a uh, a video game trailer yeah why do you think that is because i think that answer will open up a a lot of other avenues that we'll end up talking about (laughs) I was thinking about that too. I think in some way they have some similarities, Yeah. right? So I think movies also, like games, Mm -hmm. are relevant depending on what point they are in their development or release cycle. Right. So for games, the way I started thinking of it was you've got the reveal, teaser, there's like the teaser trailer. Mm -hmm. You also see that for movies. There's almost nothing. It's just like a, hey, this thing is coming. There's like a voice. There's maybe some echoes of music, and there's, like, the big title reveal. That's the same for, like, let's say Star Wars or Marvel or any of the big blockbuster-type movies. Right. Maybe not some type of indie, but even, like, Blade Runner. Like, any any big, big big-time movies that you're expecting to see, they do that, too. They do. Yeah, there is something similar to that, because they'll do, like, the... It shows almost nothing, and it'll say, like, Venom trailer coming. Yeah, right. And then I think... So, the next two are where they differ the most, at least the way I'm thinking of it. Then you've got the the second... The real trailer. Mm Mm-hmm. With movies, it's that's important because it's like showing you the characters. It's right. showing you somewhat of the plot. Why are we going to see this movie? Who's the villain? Yeah. Who's in this movie? Are we? Are there any cool characters? Did all the Avengers show up in this one? Where the fuck is Hawkeye? Those types or of things. Or even if right? I don't care about the characters, is it at least going to have some really cool action scenes? Yeah. Or whatever. This, this movie takes place in the Arctic. Like, mm-hmm. there's going to be things like that. Yeah. Important backdrop. What's the scene? Who's scene. the characters? Who are the actors? Yeah. Is it going to bore you out of your mind? So that's true 
with video games, kind of. But actually, this is where I think they start to differ. Right. Because here, some games either fall into the camp of, like, almost telling you nothing. They mm-hmm. show you, like, some emotionally punchy narrative. Yeah. Or, and we can talk more about this, but... Or they go into, like, here's all the cool shit, and we're not telling you anything about the story. Right. We're telling you why you should play our game. And then, I feel like the final... Sometimes you'll see, like, the final phase, when things are about to come out. Mm-hmm. You really just see recuts or extra seconds added to the movie yeah. trailer. Or like a rehash. Oh, you know what? I didn't see the Millennium Falcon that way. I, I think you see... I think for the people who do it right and do it smart, you see more of like the cinematic style story trailer right before the game launches. Because yeah. it, it gets the emotional hooks in you and it gets you really excited to go on yeah. the journey after they've showed you all the other shit that you really want to know answers to. Right. So that's that's what I had. I had the three types, but I... I I would add, I would call it four now because the teaser reveal really is its own thing. Yes. So I would say that. Um, and then I've had like the story slash heart trailers, which are those. They they put the meat hook, hooks in you. And the, yeah. It's so like the Spider-Man Be Greater trailer was a, yes. it showed no gameplay. It showed, right. it was all about story and um, the spirit of the game and those, like the intangible stuff that just moves you, moves right. your heart. Yeah. So gameplay exhibition trailers where they're almost just straight up gameplay yes. just to show you what this game, what the game is going to actually look and move and smell smell like when you get your hands on it Mm -hmm. and then the other one i had was the feature list trailer where uh Mm. like you'll see these sometimes come a little bit closer to launch i think yeah where it's like new raid seven new guns eight pieces of gear yeah new this new that where they have their they recut uh cinematic stuff and gameplay but then they layer a bunch of information on top of it yeah i would agree with that but that's only going to be for games that have that kind of a thing like something like uncharted 4 isn't going to have something like that Mm -hmm. as much or like something that's just i think you still see them they're, they're used a little bit more selectively though the, the, yeah. that's not the one you would see at the bar like right. on the tv screen or at a movie yeah, yeah. theater or something like that it, it would be something you catch on youtube that's like the assassin's creed will like announce their plan for dlc where it's technically a trailer it's meant to get you excited but it's com- it's still communicating a bunch of information yeah it becomes you i think know? those are more of a communication is a yeah. better way but they you're right they are trailers and sometimes they even title them gameplay trailer right. or whatever and, but or, it has all that shitload of information yeah. in it that you want to know as a gamer so yeah that's true on that note going back to it the the question of that versus cinematics it, it is uh it is interesting because like with a movie right you're you're watching this and you're the decision you're making is is this worth like 10 to 20 bucks and an afternoon or an evening of my time yeah and with a game a trailer a game trailer really does have to answer a lot more stuff because you're yes. saying I'm going to spend 60 bucks and I expect to play this for minimum a couple of weeks yep. and sometimes up to a year or more. Right. Um, and it's, it's, so it is a much bigger decision. And I, I, that's why I think you can't really directly compare those. The game trailers have the burden of communicating a lot more information from gameplay mechanics to story to DLC package release schedule and all that shit. I completely agree. So if we talk, like if we're thinking of reveal trailers, teaser trailers, yeah. I react completely differently right. to a movie reveal. Yeah. I get like, Oh my God, that was Luke Skywalker talking. Even if there's nothing yeah. else, I'm just like freaking out. Yeah. Because the story and the characters out. are the whole enchilada. Right. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And like now I know what's actually being made. Right. Now I know what the name of the movie is. Mm-hmm. This is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Whereas like that equivalent for a game, I'm like, yeah. great. So what? Like, right. I They're think, making another Halo game? Of course they are. Tell I me I think more. teasers can be done well or they can do, be done poorly, though. Like the Halo one, I know this is blasphemy to Xbox owners, but the, I, I didn't feel like they, the, the new one, Halo Infinite? Yeah. They really didn't show that much. No, um, they didn't show anything. But with, There was you, some elk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like and a, a helmet of, at the end or And whatever. some private, like... Low ranking Marines. And I feel like Halo has done better teaser stuff in the past, like much better teaser stuff in the past. Anyway, they have. But yeah. so the one I thought of, though, was uh, The Last of Us 2, when they very first oh, announced wow, okay. it, and it was Ellie, like, looked like she'd been through hell, covered in blood, and she's, like, playing. Yeah. Uh, playing the guitar and Joel comes in like there was so much that you could read into that yeah. but they really didn't reveal too much or, no, or, or anything at all um, and I thought that that was like actually a really good uh, teaser thing where it it really like you had your mouth watering to know more okay fair point but even though like I know like I did get ex- the last of us two teaser was yeah. really good and I was like wow this looks it answers a couple questions she's older I think that it was gives you Joel a, yeah it gave you <laughs> Or was oh, it her memory? Yeah, it there was some... all these people who were like, is that a ghost? Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. who knows? And we didn't really, in the gameplay stuff, you didn't see. Yeah. No, so, I mean, they referenced him, actually. Yeah. 
in the when but you didn't see dance. him and you didn't see no. anything about their relationship really which is fine but it really just made me go even though i was like that looks i'm sure it's gonna be really good let me tell you before they showed that yeah. i knew last of us 2 was gonna be really good right yeah. so i still wasn't it makes your mouth water right yeah but i don't have more money to give them towards it <laughs> right. i'm gonna buy it like right. i'm excited that they're making it but to me i still wasn't like damn like oh what is it all like for some reason yeah. psychologically to me i react very differently mm-hmm. but you're right it was a really good reveal so so, okay, so just using we're just using this as an example, the last of us. So the, the, the next thing they put out was the it was more of a cinematic. Yeah. Remember with the, dudes the woman hanging up and the getting hanged? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It was very gruesome. Very gruesome. And then the next thing they re- revealed after that was the gameplay demo. Um, do you think like that's a that is a good order? Do you think there's a best order to reveal content mm. in? A best sequence of types of trailers for a game to communicate itself well? Yes. Again, though, I think it depends on the type of game. Right. I think for a game like Uncharted yeah. or, the, or uh, The Last, Last of Us That too. has a reputation Let's say already. Last of Us 2. A game that already has a, rep- a reputation, you're mostly playing it because of the... I mean, Last of Us is so famous because of the narrative. So I think that's a good way to get you hooked. Right. Like, you, they want you to know, like, this is going to be a dark story. All the things, like, that those that rich narrative that made you fall in love with Last of Us, yeah. that's still going to be there. That being said, so they did that mm-hmm. with the teaser and then with the uh, gruesome, like, the grisly. They're setting... And they're also helping manage expectations. Right. This is not a happy, feel-good game. Yeah. This isn't like a... Everyone grew up and everything Joel worked and out Ellie fine. ride off into the sunset no. or whatever. It, yeah. Like, clearly some shit's going to happen. The world is still a bad place, yeah. and we're not going to let you forget that. But then they showed off the gameplay mechanics, mm-hmm. and they showed off... Here's what I think is really important. If you're going to show off gameplay mechanics, show us stuff that is new and, like, surprises us in new ways. The Last of Us 2 trailer did that. The way she interacted with the environment, the way that she did things was very different than what we were used to in Last of Us 1. Right. Just as an example, because Joel moved very differently than Mm -hmm. Ellie, and even though you play Ellie for that chapter, it's still, like... This was a big deal, right. watching how she fought, how she moved, how yes. she stealthed, her tactics. It was all really different than how you would have played as Joel. Well, and just all the mechanic stuff under the hood was yeah. like very apparent as it was the very gameplay apparent. went on, that there, they really put new stuff into the game. Yes. Yeah. Let's contrast that with the Battlefield Five yeah. reveal trailer, right. which, before we even get started, I'm really excited for Battlefield Five. Mm-hmm. I Just before we did this episode, though, I went and watched the Battlefield One reveal trailer yeah. that everyone loves. It was so good. And the Battlefield Five yeah. to try and be like is it really that different so what i think the battlefield 5 initial reveal trailer there's been great ones since Mm -hmm. it didn't show what's new about this game other than there are girls in it that's honestly really the only like show they showcase the chick with the hook that's kind of it it's back in world war ii the inner i mean it looks good well they so in that one i think for the people who were sort of fanboys for the battlefield series like they showed a couple of things like after the you after they jump out the windows and all that crap of the falling on the back and shooting from a backward yeah laying on the back prone position they showed like a few little mechanics there and it had the actual in-game footage it did but it didn't show like if you were controlling at that point right. or not or what it would actually feel like to play a match and what's different about that right does that and actually it, happen yeah. in the game right or is that just part of the canned story or like a on rails thing exactly. you would experience in yeah in the story yeah right. we don't know and there wasn't enough like okay honestly if and it, playing the beta i didn't do that i don't like it, it wouldn't yeah it wasn't this thing that i was like oh i'm so excited to lay on my back exactly so yeah. is that really the feature you want to show yeah. off like yeah. we now have back shooting there are there's you, you can do better than that, right? <laughs> right? Like, show us why we're going to World War II again. Why, what is it that you have done so differently mm-hmm. that you think you can retread this old ground right. new and right. make it fresh and not just make it feel like a an HD polished and version? And I, honestly, I don't think they had to try... I don't think they had to try that hard. I think they needed good maps. They needed interesting guns. They needed an interesting-ish take on it. But we haven't been back to World War II in current gen, in a, in my opinion, in a, in a very satisfying way. I'm not a big... I think Call of Duty's meh, so take that for what it's worth. I know some people liked World War II. But to go back to World War II in Battlefield, in current gen tech, I'm like, I'm already on board with that. All they had to do was show some really good gameplay, some some touch-ups to the physics, and those kinds of things. And I'm gonna buy that shit. And, and I did. But I was gonna say, but you're not the one that that trailer reveal is for, okay? They, they don't reveal the 
Spider-Man trailer to me, they had me at Spider-Man, <laughs> right. right? And we're going to buy the new Destiny, too. Even when we gripe about it, we're still going to do it. <laughs> yeah. You make the trailer for the people who are on the fence. You make the trailer for the other people who aren't sure why they should buy this game. Right. Like, you want to generate that hype. It seems like there's so many people who were playing this, like, the Spider-Man game on mm-hmm. PS4. We did an episode about that a couple weeks ago. That probably haven't played, like, you yourself hadn't played Web of Shadows or Shattered Dimensions. These trailers should be, like, bringing in the new audience and justifying why now is the time, you know? Because if, I, I don't know. And I that that particular trailer, the reveal, mm-hmm. failed, I think, at that. Oh, it, yeah, no, it absolutely did. I think installment games are interesting, right? Because going from Battlefield 1 to Battlefield 2, you, you almost have to resell it like a... There are the hardcore core people who love Battlefield that'll buy it no matter what. Yep. But there are people who didn't play 1, but maybe they played Bad Company 2, or right. maybe they played 3, and they're like, why should I get this one? Because I'm a yeah, so-so guy. Exactly. Yeah, and I, and I think... Uh, yeah, so Spider Man did a good job. Like Chance the Rapper put his like tweeted out like the damn that looks amazing. Yeah, like, everybody was excited about Spider Man because mm-hmm. it looked there was there they sold it so well there was something there right for everybody and yeah and it seemed like with Battlefield it was more about the the studio heads making a point about there's women and and d- diversity more than they cared about actually showing players what they wanted to see which is gameplay and if you're selling a new installment that's taking you to a new world or you're introducing a new IP I think you now today you have to lead with gameplay i don't think that's optional can you imagine like if uncharted lost legacy was just like there's a chick in it right and that's it you would have been so i would have been disappointed yeah you i liked the stuff i saw for lost legacy because it showed why she was kick-ass yeah why it was going to be a new adventure well and how it things sh- were yeah, different the gameplay showed that you were going to get everything you loved about uncharted with, right. a, with a new hero and her being a woman was just sort of Right. Secondary, but it was a character you already knew and loved, I guess. But Now, even the Battlefield uh, 5 trailer didn't feel pandery to me, yeah. I didn't think, but it just, it, it didn't show anything else new. So, right. like, if you look at the Battlefield 1 trailer, there's, like, the Zeppelins, and they can show yes. off the tanks and the guns because so, those yeah, are they, new. That's right. They did introduce new mechanics, like the, the Zeppelin yeah. crashing down into <laughs> yeah. the town in the massive explosion. No one had ever seen anything like that in, right. in a massive And that's in battle. the game. Yeah, that's yeah. all in the game. They right. showed, like, actual functions and things that you're like, we've never done this before, See, we've never experienced this point. before. Like, and I'm never... No, I'm just kidding. I keep saying I'm never going to compliment you. I think that is a smart point, because there, <laughs> there really is nothing like that. The stuff they added in Battlefield 5 was, like, laying on your back shooting. And when I played the the beta it was like i f- you can crouch and run and stay crouched but it's like a huddle like a huddled run and i was like oh that's a cool nice touch but it wasn't anything as cool as a zeppelin crashing no. into a freaking town and it they showed like, like trench warfare and right. stuff which was also the spiked bats and the yeah the that's all that was all new and, yeah. that was all new to battlefield you'd never experienced that before yeah so i think that ultimately i push all the other shit aside about snarky execs and the whole thing that probably is the yeah. bigger deal there there really was nothing new other no, than custom Custom, a, other than Fortnite customization. Yeah, a chick yeah. with an arm is like, okay. Well, and the dude, the, the dude with the katana and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, I think, and it's interesting, though, that everyone picked all these other little things to complain about, but I think ultimately, I think it boils deep down, down to, under the hood, that's what went wrong. Is because that they didn't add anything. That's what we want to see. We want to know, like, and maybe I saw it more because I am that so-so guy, right? right. A Battlefield one was the first one I played. Yeah. And I liked it, um, and now I'm going to play five just because you're really into it. Well, and I, and I told you, even after I played the beta and i was like it feels like three but polished up and said set, set in world war ii that's how is that that's that's, that's good okay. to a battlefield enthusiast yeah. but it's not i didn't play three that doesn't def- mean anything to it's me. it's absolutely not a step forward right i mean it could be but you gotta find a way to show that in your trailer mm-hmm. right and i just think it was just an action cinema thing. yeah so the they released a the trailer though like way too late yeah that was the what i would call like the feature list trailer where they yeah. dug into yes. everything that was going to be in it and the story the war stories sound mm-hmm. great. Um, I You're think talking about the one that's like narrated the whole time by I the guy? So. Yeah, exactly. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a really good trailer. In, in our, in our, uh, we'll see the return of war stories where you'll go on the French resistance front lines, which, by the way, the French rest- resistance did have like a higher percentage of women in it than a lot of yeah, other yeah. fronts. Why the fuck did they not just say you'll play <laughs> on the French resistance and they would have sidestepped like the whole woman controversy and Maybe. the whole thing. Obviously the delivery of all this was poor. <sighs> it makes me so mad though. If they, I guess that's the point though. If they would have led with information and with gameplay and with like stuff people could see and touch and sink their teeth into, they, they yeah, they wouldn't have had any of this trouble. Right. Because that's what battlefield 
is, right? It's right. more of that and yeah. less of the big cinematic. Yeah, you want good gunplay, good maps, all those things, right? Yeah, good gunplay, good maps, and unique, unique reasons to play. Like, there were so many things in Battlefield 1 that kept me playing because it was unique. Yeah. These wars of attrition, the big maps, the, the like, big set like being part of like feeling like I was a world war one grunt yeah. pushing in and yep. like, and their trailer captures that really well. Right. Like you feel like you're fighting in the front muddy lines of chemical of warfare. Yeah. 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 But this felt like I did not feel like, I don't know. It didn't capture that. Yeah. And there was nothing about it that was I unique. think when you come to World War II, you expect the, the experience, and it, I, maybe it's just been done to death, but I think, well, it, it, if they, okay, they could have changed the settings, but kept the gritty feel of, like, playing Saving Private Ryan or, or, or uh, Band of Brothers, like that type uh-huh. of experience in different World War II theaters, and everyone would have loved it, but right. they, they were like, we have to do it different our way blah yeah. blah blah and they completely got away from it feeling like world war Two, which is what people who buy those games yeah. want so what i think when trailers release for in this area what i call like the main trailer the first true trailer yeah. that's a few minutes long it's going to show something yeah you either have to show me the really cool shit that's in your game like battlefield one did there's yeah. zeppelins you're in world war one it's different it's new or you got to show me something kind of gut punchy yeah. something like the dead island trailer do you remember that one where it's like the reverse of oh, the girl yeah. jumping out like Something that makes me just, oh my god. Yeah. There's no gameplay mechanics. You if know, you watch that Dead Island trailer, you don't actually know what your role is in it. Yeah. You don't know what the game's about. But like, holy shit. Like, it, it just yeah. grabbed you. And yeah, that's, that's how the Halo 3 Believe ads were. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it didn't really show the mechanics, but there was it brought me into the world. It brought yeah. me into the narrative. It, I wanted to experience that setting, right? Yeah. That environment. I, I think you can do a hybrid, right? Like, I'm preparing for this episode, I, I was looking back at the God of War trailers. Yeah. And even, like, the early introduction stuff, they showed gameplay. And yeah. then even toward the launch stuff, I was shocked because with Spider-Man, they have that B grader trailer that is completely cinematic, yeah. no gameplay, right? And, I, and in my mind, I was like, oh yeah, well that's what God of War did right up to launch. They did just these big cinematic things with no gameplay. Yeah. I was shocked. I went back and I looked at three or four different launch trailers for God of War and mm-hmm. they they start off with cinematic stuff pulled straight out of the game that like gets the emotion hooks in you. Yeah. And then they show a ton of gameplay in the middle. Yeah. And then they show, and then they cap it off with like the emotional, here's why, here's the reason why down yeah. in your guts you should play this game but they showed you all the awesome combat and mechanics in between. I think you I think now today you it's really hard to get away with doing just cinematic. Well, okay, but Obviously, you can. I mean, Spider-Man did it. Spider-Man did it, but after they had done, like, two years of showing gameplay and showing incredible web sw- swinging and developer interviews, that was just, like, the final, like, cherry on the cake. I don't know, dude. Uncharted trailer. 4 did it really well. Did they? Yeah, they have that one where he's, like, like, they did the one where he's, like, sitting in the fire and it's burning up and it's, like, him reflecting on his conversation with Sully. And he's oh, like, kid, I don't yeah. know. You've been out a long time. And he's I think like, even I back that, in. in that one, though, they showed gameplay. Well, they I, showed some I don't of the know. more One of them I watched parts. Yeah. didn't have it because I looked up the I looked it up for this oh, okay. too. Yeah. But so I think if you're going to do the cinematic, though, you have to you have to do more than just big action 90s Michael Bay film. Right. You got to do something like emotional and rich yeah. to get your hooks in, like yeah. you're saying. Like if you don't get the hooks and you just do big set piece moments, mm-hmm. I, I, that's not enough. Yeah. Um, I think cinematics can still be done, but yeah, I'm not saying they can't be done. I'm just saying that typically they, they work. I'm not going to say they only work, but most of the time, it seems to me they work much, much better if they've already laid, laid the ground work of well, built confidence I think is the best way to say it they've already mm-hmm. built confidence with the public in this is a good game the mechanics are good yeah. it's gonna feel good when you play it and then by the way here's this great cinematic that's like the emotional journey that you'll go on and why you should give a shit about these characters yeah. I mean ultimately you need both of those things I think so at yeah. some point yeah. you can't not ever have either just have one and not the other yeah I would agree um, and I, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want that personally I think those hybrid ones are good though especially as you're getting close um because like, like the, the Forsaken, the Destiny yeah, Two Forsaken trailer was a really good example of mm-hmm. a hybrid. You know the emotional impact. Cade's killers. You're yeah. hunting Cade's killers. And when I think back on that trailer, I can like hear the sound clips of Ikora and and all that stuff. And it, it's a very narrative, cinematic style trailer. Yeah. But it is just peppered with lots and lots of gameplay. Well, it's mostly shit, but it's a lot of like here's also all the cool shit and why you want to play. Yeah. There's yeah. new gear. There's new, new supers. Super there's new yeah. all this. Like they still are putting in the cool shit. Here's why you want to play. 
play. Yeah. If they just did another live action, yeah. though I like I've liked some of their live I hate action their trailers. Live action ones so much. Some of them are okay, but that wouldn't have been good enough for this, yeah. right? Because they're trying to win people back to Destiny too. So they got to do the this is going to get its hooks in you. Plus, here's all the reasons why you should come back and play or try it out if you've never played it before. Yeah. Right. They got to show the cool shit too. Yeah. So I wonder if Battlefield would have done better if they would have done something like that, like a really epic voiceover narrative thing of like here's why you come back to World War II and fight this war. I mean, honestly, um, like like clips from the war stories and then they could have showed as much gameplay and I and maybe they could have even gotten away with some of the wacky customization stuff if there was more of like a here's why we're going back to World War II, here's why it looks different here. That kind yeah, of I think they could have done better with a more hybrid trailer because yeah. what they showed was kind of weak and if the war stories are that rich and that good, they should have put some more hooks in you with them yeah. instead of just a, hey, another day jumping out of houses, pick me up on your motor cycle like it just <laughs> yeah like yeah that's battlefield yeah yeah i mean so nothing new yeah right i mean it looks fun it does say, but so i think that's i think you can do hybrids and i think hybrids are done really well and are pretty common but you gotta get both of those things in if you're gonna do it yeah don't just show this it's not the 90s anymore we're not we don't tolerate it in our movies and we don't tolerate it in our video games yeah. we want something more Thank you for listening to Save Every Universe. If you enjoyed this episode, uh, share it with a friend. And if you'd like to support us financially, uh, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash save every universe. We've started a new initiative. You've probably heard us listen to this a couple for the last few weeks. If you pledge on Patreon, you will get a special invitation to our Champions of the Universe channel where you can uh, talk with us. We'll be on, we're on there all the time and we can swap ideas. You'll get insight into some of the episodes. We may even like run ideas by you guys. Or you can kick ideas. Yeah. Up yeah. to us. Yep. Yep. It's a great way for us to talk to uh, our patrons. So um, we will reach out to you if you become a patron, a patron on patreon.com forward slash save every universe. Uh, and if you have thoughts on trailers, uh, what makes a good one? What makes uh, what tugs at your heartstrings? Uh, do you prefer uh, gameplay trailers over cinematic trailers? Vice versa. Do you like the hybrid? Uh, you can reach us at save every universe at gmail.com. <laughs>